Hi, Sulis. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya. Same as awesome, Naya. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So this video is talking about how black people do not have ally and at the same time, black trauma cells. And this, I don't think this is new to every one of us. We all already know that how every community from white, Asian, Latinos, Hispanics, and all that, how everybody use our own trauma to make way for themselves. And looking at this, this really tells you how also most social medias are really crazy. Why? Because I don't see how videos that are very rare to desist will be getting views, millions of views, thousands of likes. But people talking about how things like this affect them do not get any view. They suppress it. The fact that everybody wants to talk about what is going on in black community or wants to talk about black culture I want to talk about how probably how I know those stereotypes that they give black people, like all those things, those traumas, colorism, and all of that. Just say one word using the N word that they know is right to assist. The video is getting millions of views. And all they do is they want to live off black people's trauma. Let's get into this video. Black trauma sells, and I will never understand that. I will never understand that. I want you to think about the history of the Academy Awards, the entire history. I want you to go all the way back to the first one. Right? And I want you to look at the films that either were nominated or won Academy Awards that featured either a predominantly or total black cast. Look how much of it is trauma. Just celluloid motherfucking trauma. Black trauma. For some reason, and I don't know, I just don't know why. Black history starts in slavery. Black American history starts in slavery. It does. People love watching us drink till excess. And fuck everything that moves and smoke all the weed and all the drugs we can get our motherfucking hands on. They love watching us fight. They even love when we die, especially if it's another one of us to kill. Them. It is a motherfucking cottage industry. We have a mentality that. Black economics will save blackness and no, no. Black capitalism does not, is not going to save us any more than regular old fashioned American, Americana Caucasian capitalism is. In three years, the FBI is going to release the tapes that they have on the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. 2027, this is supposed to happen. And on those tapes, you are going to hear about Dr. Martin Luther King's dalliances with other women, which is what gave Hoover the balls to send a letter to him before he was about to receive the Nobel Peace Prize, where he very, I won't even say covertly, I mean, dead ass overtly told him he needs to off himself. Martin 
Martin Luther King's speeches have been around since he died. But nobody's going to give a fuck. Not after them tapes come out. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Because black trauma sells. Always have to be some way to put a dig in. And when we talk about these things, we are focusing on race. But if we didn't say anything, the worst aspects would be the only thing anybody talks about. And it's not like it's from the outside only. It's from the inside too. It's from the inside too. We do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves. You have black men that have not healed from whatever hurt that their moms put, put on them that are openly and with just a passion shitting as hard as they put fuck, fucking possibly can on black women. But will make excuses for their moms and their sisters. I should not them black women, but other black women. If you don't subscribe to some level of hyper masculinity, then you ain't a real man. You ain't a real black man. We have bought into the idea of black trauma. Hard. And it's concerning to me. It genuinely is. Because I've seen the other side of it. I have seen black love in its purest form and it is some of the best everything you will ever see. Whether it's gay or straight, whether it's two trans people, it doesn't matter. I've seen it and man, it has, it made my heart swell. It did. I remember I went to Pride a couple of years back and it was just this really cute ass black couple, two gay black men. And I asked them when they was getting married, how long they had been together. They had been together like six years. And they were planning on getting married in the spring of next, the, the year after. And I just told them, please keep shining. We need more of that. You see black men and black women just being in love. I've seen black joy. Little kids just... Having fucking fun, doing the same thing every other kid does. Just kids, right? I have seen us strut our stuff. I have seen us speak to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. I have seen our music literally move people to tears. And even though those things are as real as all the black trauma and things of that nature. It's really not as celebrated. It really is. I love black women. Lightest of the lights, darkest of the darks. I don't care. I love when black women just own a room. I love black men. Love them. Darkest of the darks, lightest of the lights. I love when these brothers do their thing. No matter what the fuck it is, I love it. I want to see every one of those people. From the youngest baby to the oldest person. I want to see these black folks strive and shine and be as beautiful and as talented and as needed in this world as possible. But I'm just one guy. With a TikTok page. There is a colorism conversation going on right now on black TikTok that was sparked by a light-skinned black woman with over 4 million motherfucking followers. Puts my little 1.1 million to shame. And it just seems like everything that this person does, I've never really watched any of their stuff 
I'm just getting it from what people have said about it. It's just black trauma. The all around full encompassing black trauma. That sells. You can sell Chinese shit from Timu, oh, the TikTok shop, off of that. It just seems like that is all we are good for sometimes. Our lowest lows, our worst aspects, our deepest vices, our hidden, darkest pain is entertainment for the world. Do you know what kind of commentary that says? Do you do you really understand what kind of commentary that truly gives out? It is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking to know that I will make this video and it'll get a couple of thousand views or maybe a couple of hundred, who knows? And some black person will come on here doing some of the shit that they just some of the worst stereotypical shit that society believes of us. And it'll go viral. Because it's black trauma. And it's always in season. It's always in fashion and it always sells. I would say make that make sense, but. Before angry and myself get ready to live stream here on the tiki talks uh, uh superplex party presents wwe clash of the castle i just need to remind people that ally is a slur it's a slur it's just like fuck it's a slur some of y'all are walking around here with the badge and the title of fucking ally you gave it to yourself. You've never fucking earned it. You've never challenged it. You've never put any skin in the game. And you are a detriment to everything you believe in. If you're going to stand against Donald Trump, you need to stand against everybody in Donald Trump's orbit that enabled that motherfucker to get to where he is right now. With the exception of maybe Bannon, or Baron, excuse me, his son, the, old, the youngest. Everybody else in that motherfucker's orbit got us to where he is today. Mary Trump tried to tell y'all this. Y'all didn't listen. But y'all defending certain parts of fuck him. And everybody that's connected to him with the exception of his youngest child. His children enabled him. His wives enabled him. The fucking press enabled him. His business partners enabled him. People on his fucking staff enabled him. He's the virus that is fucking up America right now because a bunch of people look the other goddamn way. And if you find that offensive and you think what I just said is wrong, I should look at certain aspects of it. You were an ally and that is a slur. I said what I said. I ain't taking it the fuck back. Ally is a slur. A whole lot of people want to talk for black lives and native and indigenous lives and Hispanic lives and LGBTQIA plus lives. In other words, you want to center your motherfucking self because that's all it comes down to. Oh, you need the spotlight. Oh my God, look at me, I'm an ally. You're a slur. It's a slur. It's, it's a fucking slur. You might as well just call me the N-word and get it to fuck over with. You're not doing the work because the work needs to be done. You're doing the work for recognition. That's it. That's it. Some of y'all are walking around here faking a goddamn funk because you are anti-racist on TikTok, but you're not anti-racist at Aunt Tia's house. Aunt Julie out here making fucking mashed potatoes and calling every brown person uh, a W back, and your silly ass is sitting here shoving mashed potatoes down your motherfucking throat because you love your Aunt Julie, don't you? You're an ally. And an ally is a slur. I'm anti-racist. Did you tell your daddy? I, uh, you're an ally. And an ally is a slur. I just think I need to remind y'all of that. I do. Some of y'all want to put your meager lived experiences against the experiences of fucking black, brown, and native and indigenous people in this country and they're not weighing the fuck out. Your feelings are hurt. Our lives are at risk. A lot of y'all white women walk around here talking about y'all fight for other women. You don't. You don't because you don't listen to them. 
I don't give a fuck if you have a, a black woman's video in your pin in your pin video. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't care. Because did you listen to what goddamn thing that was said in the fucking video? Of course you didn't. You get in your little fucking feelings when somebody tells you, hey, this is not a space where we're going to center white women. Or they say things like, hey, white women, you know, y'all keep letting us down every election. Well, not me. You, did you want a cookie? If it don't apply, let it fly. We have to keep saying that because allies feel a kind of way. Oh my God, you're not going to give me the flowers I deserve? I'll give you this medal. It says ally on it. On the back it says a slur. So you can have it. Ally is a slur. This is, I, listen, I want to make sure we say that. Some of y'all need to really look at your goddamn selves. Some of y'all really need to look at yourselves and look at some of the things that you you champion and ask yourself, are you really doing the work to champion them? And the easiest way to find out whether or not you're doing the work or not is, is it about you or the cause? I freely admit that I am a recovering misogynist, but I am a misogynist. And do you know how I combat that? By working on my own misogyny and then challenging men who practice misogyny in front of me. You know the one thing you won't ever see? Me bragging about it. I don't challenge somebody that says, uh, it uses uh, a grape as a joke. And then I come on TikTok. Guess what I just did? You don't got to fucking know what I'm doing. Because I'm not an ally to women. I'm an accomplice. The work has to start with me. And it's not something I'm doing for fucking recognition. I'm doing it because it is the right thing to do. In fact, I talk about it all the goddamn time because I want to make sure people understand that I will... Br I, listen, talk bad about men. I will not find any offense in it at all. Man versus bear? I understand why you, you picked a bear. I'm over here fucking fighting with the guys and asking why she picked a bear. Because you ain't shit. That's why, motherfucker. And I'm not doing it in front of any cameras. I'm not doing it on, on no TikTok lives. None of that. None of that because I don't have to. The work is for me to be a better person. To learn. And to challenge my own thought process. The work is not about, hey, look, look at me. I'm one of the good one. No. No. And if you make content off of that bullshit, then God damn it. Congratulations. You're an ally. You really should be proud of that. But understand that I consider that to be a slur. Ally is a slur. I understand. It, it, this is going to hurt some people's feelings. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't. I don't give a fuck. Because some of y'all will stand in our fucking faces. And try to tell us and proclaim how great you fucking are. When you just woke up to this shit and you still haven't challenged the motherfuckers that taught it to you. Still. So how great can you possibly be if mom and dad can still use the n-word around you and all you'll do is just sit and eat because it's mom and dad. Now am I asking you to break up your family? Nope. But maybe you should challenge them. Hey. Hey. Dad, that shit ain't cool, man. What the fuck are you doing? Don't do it in front of my goddamn face. Do it in front of his. He's the one over here using the N-word. But some of y'all won't. Some of y'all will have really cool and edgy names. I don't give a fuck. Don't impress me with what you say in front of this. Impress me when I ain't looking. Some of y'all will swear up and down y'all are all about black women voices. But you over talk them. You don't listen. Because you have no skin in the game. None. You risk absolutely nothing by speaking over them. Telling them to their face, I support you when you don't. Because if that was the case, they wouldn't be in this situation that they're in right now. Fighting against all of this shit. Right? So spare me your feelings. Spare me what hurts your heart. 
spare me the fact that you think I'm being very cruel and harsh. I don't care. I have lived in this world for 52 years as a black person. And I have seen the cruelty of the people that want to harm me. And I have seen how empty the words people who swear they support me are. And I'm not the only one. So if you think you are doing just enough work to be considered an ally, congratulations. Now hold on to it and get the fuck out of our face. If you want to get deeper, stop trying to be an ally. Be an accomplice. That's a person who does the work without any recognition. They just continue to do the work to improve themselves, the people around them, and the communities that they live in. Or not. Just keep being an ally, I guess. So this is all I got from this, and he really made a whole lot of sense. Number one is that black trauma sells so fast. Just within a circle of an eye, that is it. It spreads like, you know, the views are always very high. With this black trauma cells that he made, you can actually go to the view and find out that it's not getting any view. But go to people that probably try to tell you that a slavery was back then, get over it, or black people are these black people or that. Those negative stereotype comments or videos and all of that, you see views. When I say views, millions of views, thousands of likes, and you are asking yourself what is going on. Not just having that view, you might also decided to speak on that video that is probably still up, just like the way the lady used the N word, right? And the video made got so many views, millions of views and thousands of likes. The worst part is that some black people that decided to take that took the video, they did not stitch it, that took the video and decided to make a commentary on the video. Also got water. The videos probably were taken down or something like that, or probably given violations, or no, but it just gets suppressed and all that. So just say one thing about black people from their trauma, just like probably coming out to say, you know, probably coming out to eat watermelon and do probably monkey sound or chicken, the way black people, like the way they say that, like chicken and all that. Trust me, they know that it's a right to the seas kind of video, you know, but it's going to sell. It will sell. People remember how the young black man that did blackface with euphoria, you know, when uh, this euphoria uh, makeup came out and they did not have a uh, brand for black people or the one that they, the black, they had, they had was like blackface for black people, right? And black people were not happy about it. Asians some other people decided to also use the same this thing to do blackface. The person got millions of views and the video was not taken down till this very moment. Before we could say Jack, the guy made another video talking about how black people wear the rags and how they probably eat chicken like he has lots of views, millions. The people that decided to ask why did they still have that video where he has blackface on got violations and all that. So one thing is that uh, this is the world we've come into already. I am not sure it's gonna change. I am not sure anything will be better because they keep saying, don't talk about it. It's gonna go away. I am not sure it will go away. I do not see it going away. But what can we do? What are we going to do? We just have to keep creating awareness. Keep talking about our history. Keep passing the history down to our children so that history will never repeat itself. For allyship and all that, you all already know that there is nothing like ally. I don't believe in that. If you believe in that, that it's great.
but black people didn't have airline and that is on period see you all in my next video bye for now